It's called forest therapy. It's a practice that's all about immersing people in the natural environment and to improve overall health. And there's many who say it really is working wonders. Erin Hazanzada went out to a local guide to learn more about the stress relieving activity and how it can help you reap the benefits with or without a guide. The stages of nature are just really profound if you stop long enough to look. For Gail Johnson, it's just gorgeous and there's water flowing. Stepping off the paved path, was a transformative experience. I was watching the wind just ripple the long grass. When she was invited to a forest therapy group session, I had never heard of it. She didn't know what to expect. I was incredibly stressed out and somebody said, well, why don't you go in my place? But what she discovered was significant. It became the kickoff of an amazing summer for me of hiking, of natural interaction that I had never done in my life before. First the sun, then the shadows. Jared Morey was her guide. The idea that being outside is good for you, it's not a new idea. It's just that increasingly we aren't outside. He's one of several in Minnesota who are certified by the Association of Nature and Forest Therapies. The certification process uh, was pretty intense. Like I was surprised. We have folks in Red Wing. Uh, I operate out of the Northfield and Faribault areas. Uh, there's four or five in the cities. There is real stuff behind it, which is really cool. There's peer reviewed research that this actually works for people. Absolutely. You go to the National Institutes of Health website, you look up forest therapy, nature therapy. There are loads of papers. We found studies that suggested forest bathing can significantly lower cortisol levels, the stress hormone. My favorite theory that I've heard so far is that it is productivity blocking. We experienced a slice of a session for ourselves. Activating your senses is a big part of the walks. <laughs> Absolutely. Closing out the way Jared's professional sessions do. This is pine tea. With a cup of tea made from nature, with ingredients he knows are safe. So this is sort of a gratitude exercise to close out with. Yeah, nature and outdoor experiences are being woven into people's prescription plans and treatment plans in different places. I invite you to just enjoy the scent of the tea. Jared has worked with universities, faith groups, and corporate partners to lead these hours long sessions. I've heard young people report that it's a transformative experience and that it helps them to realize how important nature is in their lives. But he says there's plenty you can do on your own to feel better now. Go for a hike or walk in nature, but take time to stop and engage your senses or find a sit spot outside that's close to home. You just pick the same place uh, in a place that you can get to every day and you sit in that spot for 20 minutes every day and you get to see how that space changes. A different type of therapy rooting us in the natural world we often lose connection with. That's been a big thing for me now is trying to remember to step off the path and it was just the most amazing thing. Overall, Minnesota is getting warmer. According to state records, winter nights in northern Minnesota are on average 7.3 degrees warmer than they were back in 1895. So what does that mean for the future of farming in the state? As you're about to see, it seems we are in good hands. The U of M campus is bustling with students, but these kids aren't in college. They're in high school and their futures are front of mind. And then you're here and you see all these kids that are just excited about what they can offer. They're here for the future farmers of America Convention. I like the friendship and just the strengthening of the agricultural community. Oh, I like it all. Um, there's, you know, there's hard things in farming and there's great things, but if you can keep positive attitude for, for everything, that's key. It's, it's exciting, you know, we're, we're young, we're ready to go out and, you know, kind of help and improve and change and go out into the world. It's a world, a climate that's changing. Miss Williamson teaches ag in western Minnesota. The unique thing that I think that we bring to the table is that we're able to address it without it becoming a political topic. Because we can say like, all right, so why, why are we able to now grow corn in northern Minnesota um, that has a longer growing season? Like we, we talk about those things, but in reality, we talk more about like, how do we make things more sustainable uh, when we're talking about um, any sort of weather climate change. With about 3,000 teenagers here, you can imagine there's a lot of chatter. Two of the big topics being discussed, sustainability and conservation. They're not just taking steps, they're taking action. 
Like in Recorey, FFA students are using cafeteria scraps to then plant into the garden, and then they produce fresh vegetables to go back to the cafeteria. And in Grand Rapids, students are maintaining and sustaining their own forest, a project Alfred is all in on. I think that for future generations, uh, preservation and conservation uh, is, is super key, but we also need to improve what we have right now, you know, so not just keep it the same, but improve it, you know, build the health up. A growing crop of future focused farmers. Really benefits not only us now, but uh, our future generations. Twin Cities area public elementary schools are part of a new opportunity to create a culture of musical theater. The local arts community is bringing the musical program to life with the help of some Disney magic. Our Derek James shows us the partnership that's giving children opportunities that they may not have otherwise. Lights, camera, action! In less than two weeks, the curtain goes up on this musical production of Disney's Frozen at Susan Lingard Elementary in St. Louis Park. With smiles and scripts in hand, the students are excited to show what they've learned. Fourth grader Della Blissett plays one of the hidden folk. This is my first play that I've ever been in, so it's kind of just cool to be here. Susan Lindgren is one of four elementary schools in the Twin Cities selected for Disney Musicals in Schools. The program is overseen by the Hennepin Theatre Trust in an effort to develop musical theatre programs in underserved schools. It renews your faith in mankind, it reviews, renews your faith in why the arts matter and just the pure unadulterated joy of creation. It's wonderful. The young cast and crew say that collaborative creation is what they enjoy most. Like people have different ideas than you do. You don't think of something that like someone else can think of it. Like someone else can help you think of something. I like um, that we do it at, um, together and I get to do it with friends so I'm less nervous. Disney Musicals is free to the school, including professional development for staff from Hennepin Theater Trust. Susan Lingren Elementary is doing what it can to make the program sustainable. We have four wonderful staff members that are taking this on above and beyond their normal roles to bring arts and performing arts to our, our elementary age students. Talent development teacher Meg Shower is the show's director. She has seen firsthand the power these new opportunities bring for the students. Seeing the confidence come through in the kids, not only in their singing, their dancing, and their acting has been so rewarding. And seeing the group of students come together, even outside in the hallways. The students will first perform Frozen for friends and family. Then they hit the big stage for a number at Pantages Theater at a student share celebration for all four schools. I'm pretty nervous about it, but it's also really exciting. In St. Louis Park, Derek James, WCCO News. Up next, he is way more than a basketball coach. How one man is doing his part for the community and keeping kids off the street.